You are currently looking at one of the most bullish chart setups in all of crypto, and it belongs to none other than Near Protocol, some calling it the king of 2025. I'm going to share with you exactly what I am seeing on this chart that could potentially show a massive move up for Near Protocol and its price. We're also going to take a look at, well, why is the price going up? What are some of the exciting things happening and why a lot of people are saying the king of 2025 is going to be Near Protocol? Let's jump right in. Now, this is from Cointelegraph. Some of the reasons why Near Protocol is gaining, more specifically, 50% in one single month. Let's take a look here. Uh, reason number one, they've implemented sharding through their Nightshade 2.0. Uh, Near Protocol has achieved their 2.0 update. So the platform achieved this following a Near 2.0 update on August 12th, making Near the second chain to achieve sharding in production after Elrond. Uh, implementing sharding has positioned Near Protocol for steady long-term growth as the demand for dApps continue to grow and also AI, which we'll get into a little bit later. Uh, reason number two, on-chain data supports Near's price surge. A lot of the times we see price move up and we say, well, well why is it going up? In the case of a project like ICP, when Bob.Fund was launched, cycles were burnt, the token became deflationary and hence demand came in and the token price went up. You can put two and two together. Well, part of the reason with Near is their on-chain metrics are starting to explode, including their network activity and network growth, which preceded Near's price performance over the last month. This, was, this is a result of increased activity brought by the growing adoption of projects on the Near protocol, which has seen the daily transaction count increase by 42% in just one month. This is between... August 25th and September 24th. So almost a 50% increase in daily transactions, according to data from DeFi Llama. The TVL on your protocol has increased by 34% from 183.7 million on September 7th to 246.5 million on September 24th. So in just two weeks, well, technically 17 days, so two weeks and three days, the near protocol TVL has surged. This is from DeFi Llama. Now, the all time high for TVL on near protocol was around, let's call it half a billion dollars, 465 million. This was back in May of 2022, which we were already in the bear market. We had not hit the bottom yet, but near protocol was continuing to buck the trend. And now, really, since the beginning of the year, we have seen near's TVL go from sub. 90 million, 82.3 million, all the way up to a local high of around 366, coming down a little bit, and now it's starting to tick up again, currently sitting at a quarter of a billion dollars. And the third reason is near strengthening market structure points to further upside. Talking about a little bit of TA, which again, we'll get into here in a little bit. So if you're liking what you're watching so far, make sure to hit the like button. Um, let's take a listen as to, well, why are people so bullish on Near? Why are people saying 2025 belongs to Near Protocol? Is it AI? Is it chain abstraction? Is it the sharding? Listen to what Ilya talks about when he describes some of the benefits of chain abstraction. Now, because you like the world is moving to multi-chain, right? If you have to have yeah. chains, you will need to build for multi-chain, and so this gives you a tool to actually build this multi-chain experiences. For example, if you're launching a token. You can launch it on one of the chains, or you can launch on all chains. Uh -huh. Like even the chains that are not launched yet, it will be launched. Because you get actually the, you know, for EVMs, you get a predictable address. Yeah. That will be the same everywhere. Uh -huh. You'll get SPL address. I mean, if you really want to go hard, you can get BRC20. <laughs> and so, and you can have a single kind of total supply and you just manage it, pretty yeah. much rebalancing between, between the chain. Now, I don't know about you, but there's been countless times where I've had money in Ethereum or money in Solana. I've sold a meme coin, made some money, and now the money is sitting, let's just say, in Ethereum. And now there's a new meme coin that I want to get exposure to, but it's on Solana. Now I got to find a way to take those profits and I got to upload them onto an exchange or I got to try to find a cross chain DeFi bridge or something. You have to go through so many different steps. To be able to convert that money back from Ethereum to Solana and then put it into a Phantom Wallet and then exchange it for that meme coin. Now, with what Nira is doing in the vision of the multi-chain that Ilya just talked about, 
If you want to launch a token, you can now launch it to multiple chains at one single time without the need or worry of fragmented liquidity. This is going to massively help adoption in crypto. Uh, and it's also going to make it a lot easier for the user as well, which is one of the reasons I'm so bullish on Nier because they always put the user first. The other thing I want to talk about, uh, staying on chain abstraction, but this is very, very interesting video talking about what does chain abstraction enable going a little further in depth. A lot of this stuff is pretty damn cool. Let's take a listen here. What are some of the other use cases? Well, we're particularly excited about what, uh, what can happen when it's a smart contract that's using this, uh, this, these chain signatures. So I think there's three in particular that I'm excited about, uh, in addition to a couple of others that will eventually blow minds. First is bridgeless cross-chain DeFi, hence the name of this talk, and we'll go into a little bit more detail there. Uh, the second is DeFi on non-smart contract chains. So you can basically uh, take chains that really only support transfers, like a Bitcoin, like a Doge, uh, like a BitTensor. Um, and what you can do is you can use near smart contracts to act as escrow contracts and also kind of manage who controls what. And on top of just this fairly simple primitive, you can build lending protocols that support any asset on any chain, including assets that are staked or in kind of unique states, maybe even in liquidity pools. It's very flexible. Uh you guys understand the, what that means? That means that <laughs> you can take, you can essentially have DeFi level applications, DeFi level functions on chains that don't even have smart contracts on their layer one. He mentioned Bitcoin. He mentioned BitTensor. He mentioned Doge. What about all the other ones? Uh, that, that, that alone right there. But it doesn't stop there. He keeps going. There's three more points he's going to hit on here. Listen to this. Uh, and you can also then, of course, build swaps. And you can actually power swaps between any asset on any chain. So you could be trading like a staked TIA for an NFT on Solana. It can get really wacky. Uh, and then the third that we'll touch on. All right. That, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> You can take a stake token on a Cosmos chain and swap it for an NFT on a Solana chain or an Ethereum chain or an Ordinal or whatever the case may be. Um, this is something that, that I don't even think six months ago anyone would have thought, oh, yeah, that's something we can definitely do. Uh, so shout out to the Near team, man. Uh, absolutely amazing. You wonder why we're so bullish on Near. This is probably one of the reasons why. Let's go back to the video on a little bit is you know, what we were just discussing, which is that multi-chain account abstraction pattern, which includes support for a gas relayer. So one of the things that's cool about near accounts is they're natively smart contract accounts, meaning that like any near account can have any number of keys. And so you can rotate keys, which can add for security. You can have kind of multi-signer patterns. It's very flexible. Um, and you get that out of the box and you can then use that as your account to sign for any chain, uh, which I think is pretty cool. So to dive a little bit deeper on some of the ideas that we're seeing teams explore in the bridgeless cross-chain DeFi realm. So we talked about the native swap. So we talked about the cross-chain lending order book. You can even power something like restaking for any asset on any chain. And you can basically handle kind of the slashing conditions and the reward conditions on near, which is going to open up a lot of opportunities uh, and, and just ways to reuse assets. Uh, and then we'll walk through this example kind of specifically, but uh, you can also pause it here. Right. Let's go back to the video. Pause it there. Take a screenshot and read that and try to understand what this could mean for talking about unfragmented liquidity and bringing all the chains together. Uh, man, shout out to what Nier is doing. Super exciting. Um, now, let's take a look. Let's let, let's let's move back over to price action. We'll get into the chart here right now. But first, I want to share this from B in crypto. Uh, Nier protocol on track for a 45 percent rally in uh, they misspelled October, it's UP-tober, but October, which is typically the most bullish month in all of crypto, every single year, averaging around 22 to 24% returns in the month of October, going back to 2013. And so we're expecting more of the same this year heading into the election. Positive, now what are what, some of the reasons? Positive funding rates. And strong CMF signals suggest ongoing bullish momentum with traders optimistic about future gains. Now, the chart I showed you in the beginning, this is near protocol on the weekly time frame. A couple things that really stand out here. One is this falling channel pattern, falling wedge, falling channel, whatever you want to call it. Some people might pull the pole here and call it a bull flag. But either way, this is a falling channel 
that does typically break to the downside or to the upside. Excuse me. Now, you might be wondering, well, okay, well, we just bumped up against the top end of this trend line. Shouldn't we wait for a retest of this $3 range? And now, sure, if you want to wait on the sidelines and wait for a potential retest uh, for $3, you can. You'll get the best entry possible. But I don't believe it's going to get that far down. I believe a breakout is imminent. And part of the reason why is looking at this money liquidity flow index. Now, this is a custom indicator from us here at Sin City Crypto. What it does is it measures money flowing in, money flowing out. But I think more importantly, it measures where is the sentiment on this coin. And you can see that in the gray line right here. We have this midline where the histogram switches from green to red. That is our midline. And anytime we see a cross of the sentiment above this midline with the money flow in the green, it has been very bullish for near. Let's take a look at the most recent example. This was back in October of last year. Now, I'm not saying this is coincidence, but you never know. October of last year, money flow was green. We were kind of teetering right below the midline on sentiment, but we hadn't crossed it yet. So if you waited for this cross, which happened right here, this was on the week of October 23rd, and you entered into this position in, on October of 23rd, you entered at the open, and you wrote it all the way to the top, it was a 710% gain for near protocol in just five months call it six months, in half a year, getting a 7X. That's pretty damn good. Uh, at the tail end of a bear market, going into the very, very early stages of a bull market, we have seen price on the weekly time frame making lower lows and lower highs in this descending channel. And again, I mentioned these break to the upside. Well, look at the confluence we're getting on our liquidity flow index. Money flow has been green, and we just crossed... Price, the sentiment just crossed above our midline. Are we going to see another 700% increase on your protocol? I don't know, but I am betting that the price is going to break above this channel and continue to go up. The very next stop we should see is right. We need to take out this high of around $6.37. I believe we're going to blow right through that and meet some immediate resistance right at the $8.36. If we blow past that, my friends, there's really nothing. There's really nothing stopping us until we get to about $12 and then on our way to making new all-time highs. Uh, we are super bullish on Near Protocol here on this channel. Let us know in the comment section if you're bullish on Near Protocol. Also, if you want access to the Liquidity Flow Index, I will drop that link in the comment section and pin it to the top. You can use it to make trades and make money for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Come check out our live show Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you next one. Peace.